Hello Bonsoir Montreux It is inevitable that he becomes obsolete because the things that define him become obsolete. These things are part of who he is and now they are irrelevant. Probably my, one of my favorite tours so far just because we haven't done a tour with Lagwagon and uh, or an extensive tour with Lagwagon and uh, it was a long time coming because we really like those guys and so yeah, the crowds have been great. Now we just, I don't even remember where we met them, but I mean, it was just from being on FAD and probably at a show somewhere. I remember when we met them. You do? Yeah, we opened up for them in Santa Barbara. Um, I don't think we were on FAD at the time. I think we met, what? I don't think we were, we Santa might have Barbara? Been. Yeah. I don't remember that at all. Joe and I met them was at an RKL show. Oh, RKL show, yeah. But we can't remember where or when. It was in the 90s. But they were playing as well that same night? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> they were playing with us. He remembers more of that kind of stuff than I do. That's, I was just talking to Leon about that earlier. He thinks we played with RKL, RKL, and I know we did, but I can't remember even where. Oh. He thinks it was Berkeley, but I don't know. So we met those guys before, but I fucking I never know when I meet people. I mean, I'm just, we've known them forever. And yeah, and if you're not doing a tour and you're just doing a one-off, it's not like you're hanging out. Yeah, but I mean, we've seen we've, we've seen them at shows through the years, and we you know we know them. So Joey's really good at going out and seeing like our side bands. <coughs> and uh, these guys actually see them at bars and stuff. And well, yeah, I mean, every time they're they're around, um, you know, I'll see them play. Like I live in San Jose now, and. Uh, Santa Cruz is just like over the hill, it's like 50 minutes away, so whenever they're playing in Santa Cruz, like, I'll go over and, and, and check it out and then, you know, randomly see the guys at, at shows and stuff like that. We've done, we did a European tour with the Utters and I think Blink-182, right? Before they were massive <laughs> me mega stars, yeah. That was a long time ago. That was a long time ago. Many brain cells ago, but <laughs> but I remember they came up. They came to the merch table when I was there after we played, and they they were like lined up, and I was like, oh cool, and I just met them all yeah. straight. But my brain for that kind of stuff is mush. I don't remember stuff like that. But they were super nice, yeah. and like just we like your band. Okay, I like your band. You know, it was just like it was so bizarre. I was like not formal, but. The, the way they're like, no okay, memory. we're gonna make a point yeah. to meet these guys. I have no memory of that. Yeah, they've been around forever. They're one of my favorite fat bands for sure. I, I really, it's my favorite style of like punk. Usually, I mean, I usually would listen to classic punk before I listen to melodic punk or pop punk. Swing and have great songs. I mean, great songs. And they have so many. If I listen to punk rock, uh, they're the kind of band that I have always listened to. You know, I'm, I'm just a big fan of the Swing Nighters. I love their songs. I, I love the pop sensibility, but also like the energy they have, the guitar tones. They just, they're, they're doing exactly what I would want to do if I thought I was playing in a punk band. Mm -hmm. So for me, it doesn't matter that our bands don't sound alike. It's, it's, the pleasure is to tour with a band that you actually want to hear yeah. and want to see every night. Um. Started in 88, right? Yeah. We were a cover band in 88 and then... Um. In 90, I joined in 90 and I remember... Um, <laughs> wasn't it at that party on McAllister Street? Shanna's house or Sarah's house or whatever on McAllister. Oh yeah. So we had, there's this party in San Francisco and he was going out with a friend of mine and we were all kind of... I don't know, we had a big group of friends, sort of. I never really knew him that well, but we all had we had the same friends, so it was kind of weird. Um, but I'd seen them a few times, and then I came up to him at this party, I think, and was like, if you guys ever want another guitar player, like, just, I'm totally into it, blah, blah, blah. And then, 
then he he was like he's saying how they wanted a harmonica player <laughs> and I was like really it's like do you want to play the harmonica I'm like not really but I mean I could learn I guess I'm totally not into that like really you want a fucking harmonica player once I came in with songs I think he immediately started writing well I songs. did but because I, I already had songs but once I started just wanting, here's this song he started writing, and we, we just started writing songs. Like, yeah. he it just went off. Yeah, yeah. I think it kind of lit a fire under your ass, and you're like, oh, okay, let's do that. And then we just. Yeah, everyone was songs. writing songs. Yeah, it was good. Kevin, Kevin Gray. Was writing songs. I mean, <coughs> everyone in the band wrote songs, and I think we've sort of stuck to that same process throughout the, the history of the band, because it's just, I think it's a better way to, to do it is to collaborate and not just have one dude writing all not the songs. Not just song. one head, you know, come. Yeah. Get get all those heads together and create some monster. Awesome. So, so how about just a little bit of history on Lagwagon? How how'd you guys get started? I'm gonna ask Flip. You've um, been in the band the longest. Uh, me and the original drummer drummer Derek wanted a band that sounded like RKL because these guys were RKL, but uh, apparently drugs was tearing their band apart. So we started a band that pretty much sounded like RKL. Me and Joey started jamming with the other guys, put out a demo, and somehow I gave the demo tape to Fat Mike. These are one cassettes were how you, how you, you know, gave people your music. He called us and said he's doing a label and wanted us to be on it. What, 24 years later? <coughs> Still on Fat Records? <laughs> Um, what's the story or the concept behind the, the cover of Fistful of Hollow? Just, where's that? We just, front? we just sort of... Despair, Johnny! <laughs> um, <laughs> well, I, I, I really like the title of this. We were searching for ideas for a cover, and that I really like the title of, yeah. a song title of the song you wrote, Fistful of Hollow, and I was like... Which was kind of an accident, but when I, when I looked at it, it was like... Full of hollow. Like, that's why did I, that's weird that I did that. Yeah, Sarah actually, yeah. my wife said like you should just do like the Smiths cover, but do a different picture and do your logo instead of the Smiths, of course. And then we're thinking of what like what you have any cool pictures? Looking through pictures, like yeah, it's kind of cool, but okay, whatever. And then then there's all these pictures that are public domain, and I had no idea that like Dorothea Lang and like just super famous photographers, most of their shit is public domain. You can just use it. You which I was for, yeah. blown away because those are amazing pictures, you know. Um, and I was looking at them, and, and it's one of those things where it's just like for some of those pictures are just amazing, and we just, you know, especially Dust Bowl, that whole era is just there's pretty cool looking, just visually cool looking stuff, and it's super dramatic and kind of apocalyptic. Yeah. Looking. And then, but so we took he we we had a list of you know record titles or whatever and we chose Festival of Hollow and then we kind of, it just kind of fell into like um, just mimicking that, the artwork as well. Cool. Kind of a, I don't know, vague tribute, but not really, I don't know. I love that record, it's one of it's my favorite Smith's record. It's the work, I mean, I'm kind of a fan, but I don't know. Cool. There's no deep meaning behind it. Yeah, <laughs> we, just thought it, we just thought it'd be kind of a, Cool. Either because you can either take it as like we're making fun of them, or we're, it's an homage, or who knows. And I, but I think the title with that sort of despair, dust bowl stuff is kind of cool because you could read things into that title. I don't yeah, know, I yeah. Like it. It's too deep, man. I can't talk. <laughs> <laughs> it's looking pretty all right. But my question is, it's, it, it's the heavy snare is the one you beat on, right? Yeah. Okay, so I got that right, so I think I nailed it then. <laughs> <laughs> nailed, nailed it. Every day. Because we got this, uh... Yeah, got the heights matched on these. You got uh, all the your rack toms touching your snare. You Just the way you, you like You m -m -m make me happy. <laughs> Something's I look up. back not because I'm looking at you like you oh, fucked up. I'm never looking back at you like you're fucking up. I look back at you so I can see you hit the drums, and then I figure out where I am. I mean, I know that's I, what it is. It so you and I have to sing. 
That's how our band gets tight. No, totally. And you know that. So when I turn yeah. around, it's most of the time is I turn around because I have this weird limiting on my head and ears. So like, so when I if the drums like get even a middle of a second off, I turn around to make sure. It's just a reflex. That I no, I just look yeah. at your snare hits, and I look. I just look at the way you're swinging, and then I get right back on. Right. Most important thing to me is the, the vocals. Like it's like you know, I could lose everything. But actually, I did. I lost one ear again. But I had the vocals, and that's all I needed. I knew where the vocals were, and it's like you know. No machines are coming Already, so we just kept doing those songs live until we got them exactly how we wanted them. And then I took, once we had all the songs demoed, I took them to my house and I tempo mapped every bar of the record so that we could have editing capabilities in, in Pro Tools, but it, that it would have the absolute natural feel of the band. Yeah. And the record sounds exactly like our demos did. It just sounds, it's got all that push and pull. Even I think we've. this is the first time we've played more than like three songs from a new album on the first tour and people are still asking for more and I think, I mean we really are proud of the record and it, it's had an amazing reaction with the kids I think and um, but the crowd's been great. I mean every night it's been like a, a great a great crowd response and, and there's been a lot of people at the shows and it's great lineup. Everybody's been having a blast. So what's the story behind the title? Hey. Well, I kind of uh that just came when I was writing the lyrics. Like I said, I was using that word a, a lot. Um I just I wanted it to be a one syllable title like our early records. Yeah. Because we did that for a long time. And uh it's just something about that word. I just think it's a really powerful word. Uh, it can mean a lot of different things. I think that the news has some historic value and has a, there's an intensity to it. And so I got this idea and she said, yeah, yeah, okay, cool, that sounds good. I'll shoot it. And I was like, okay, uh, can you get a news? And she's like, yeah, there's a place down the street that makes it. I'm like, what? <laughs> She goes, yeah, you know, this place is going to be 50 bucks, though. And I'm like, fine. So she went and bought a new, so it's like a guy who hand makes them where she lives. And I said, well, what about, what about a beef farm? I mean, you know what I mean? She goes, I know, like, three different people have beef farms, so I got it. And then, like, three days later, she sent me that picture. I think just everything fell together the right way. We, were, we weren't sure we were doing the right thing by doing our drums at the blasting room and stuff because it's expensive and, and not everybody could be there. But... Uh, the drums came out so strong, and, and I think that's just the foundation for the record. And from there, I mean, we couldn't really mess it up at that point because it just sounded so good already. Yeah, I agree. But it just seems like there's a bigger, I mean, is this the normal gap here between these two? Oh, I don't Yeah, know. I don't know. That's just where the ride lives. It's not know. a sign. I set it up different every damn day, too. Yeah, you don't make it easy. Good no, I don't. I think I keep it real. <laughs> yeah. Every day it's like, oh yeah, those marks. <laughs> yeah, they're just a suggestion. Yeah, it's right. Fair enough. Cause you know, man, I'm an artist, man. I can't do every. I can't do things the same every day, man. Oh, I know. Gotta change it up, oh, dog. Keep it interesting, <laughs> whatnot. Um, tour was super fun. So much fun. I'll probably walk and look at a few shops here. Go back to sleep, then sound check, then drive dinner. Go back to sleep. Possibly do an interview. To me on what Melanie K has in store for me today. And then play a show and then get drunk. And then pass out about five in the morning and get up and do the exact same thing in Montreal. Come inside, I can show you another.